Hey guys, welcome back. No booze news tonight, but uh, it will return um, instead. We uh, will be diving deeper on the storage locker scam. It's going to be a good one because we know exactly who the scammer is now. And if you're watching this during the premiere, uh, you will be redirected to the live monthly podcast. Very late one this time with PK, Cool Trainer Ryan, and myself. Okay, so we're going to recap. Uh, share the new information on this scam and we're gonna make sure to save lots of time at the end for more Desolator slamming because uh, Yes, he's he's both dumb and stubborn and doesn't know when to quit Recap time for anyone that didn't see the previous videos and is watching this live if you didn't watch the previous videos I suggest you do so beforehand, but if not, it's okay And for anyone that forgets any of the details, we're gonna recap them right now I'm rushing through this because I can't wait to lay into Desolator. What an idiot. So, <laughs> this looked painfully staged from the start, set up to show off the counterfeits as we saw. The exhibitor badge out front almost certainly staged and put there for a reason. It fooled Desolator. It probably fooled some other people looking at the unit. Astral Radiance ETB, only a few months old. Cards were out of order, no rhyme or reason to why they were put in there like that. More proxies in clear plastic containers. Down below, both the Pokemon and the magic out front. The Pokemon is pain, painfully fake, colors are off, hollow pattern uh, was stolen and printed on from the TCG player stock images, as we see with most, most counterfeits, multiple Pikachu illustrators that just don't come along every day, one piece of stolen mail in the form of a Hobbit display, maybe the label was shown to make, it, make the unit more believable, that bookstore closed down, so maybe our perp thought people wouldn't be able to contact them. The moving slash storage company website created a few months ago, very close to the Astral Radiance release date. Very convenient, right? And no signage or indication of moving and storage facility from Street View, etc. of the building itself, the address that they're using, uh, which is pretty important, uh, as we'll see. Phone number is a cloud-based burner phone number. No business phone uh, voicemail. Uh, they are not answering the phone because it's not a real business. They did answer texts, and uh, they were unable to pretend that they could quote things. Back in 2011, someone else had that URL and located in Texas, different branding, different company, probably a real company, but yeah. So we had some very helpful stuff in the, the comments, user mean mugging in the, from those very comments of the, the previous video made a good point about them being able to easily quote the, the storage cost rather than the actual moving cost, even if they were confused. They should still be able to give you a rate on how much it costs to have one of their wooden pods. But they can't because there's probably only one wooden pod. All right, so now, most importantly, we have this statement from Phil, also in the comments section. And we're going to thank Phil uh, for this statement and uh, maybe Phil. Um, you should start a YouTube channel because uh, if someone uh, that doesn't know what they're talking about, doesn't know what they're looking at, can uh, get 50k subscribers, you can do it too in the Magic the Gathering realm. So let's hear some, some advice here from somebody that knows that the cards are fake, other than me just assuming because they're all super clean, they're all cut very well, they're all in a case, they're all very expensive cards that just wouldn't be, especially if you're tossing them in a wooden box, they're not going to be in the condition shown. Uh, we've seen examples, uh, I think we'll see an example later where Desolator is going to claim that, oh yeah, you can see multiple black lotuses in the same in the same place and they're like, they're like graded like BGS 3s or something. Uh, so like all of these cards, so old, there's no way they look as clean as the way they were presented. So if we're going to ignore that, we're going to ignore the fact that I, I can kind of tell that they're fake. And then based on everything else that's in the unit with the Pokemon cards that I can 100% verify that are fake. Here, here we go. Here's somebody that knows what they're talking about. We're going to listen to Phil here. I am an expert in beta magic cards and can verify that the beta are counterfeit. Below is what I posted on Desolator's comments a few days back. Uh, it's weird. Desolator likes to, uh, to hold back the comments, and this might have been one of those. I didn't see it on there, but I wasn't really looking. Um, but maybe he, he just wanted to ignore this fact so that he wouldn't look like a fucking dumbass. Got news for you, Desolator. You do, and you will, and you're going to continue to look like a dumbass in this video. It is pretty clear that the beta plateau and all the beta cards are fake. Real beta plateaus have two distinct print marks, one on the right border and one in the cliff face that this lacks. Which well, Shouldn't that be something you know if you're making Magic the Gathering videos for seven years and you got 50,000 subscribers? Also, the size of the card face is too big. It should be smaller than the revised printed card face, but is larger. 
it should be smaller because the original card files included the black border, but Cardamundi also added a black border, hence the white corner dots and then a larger printed area on later sets. If those cards are fake, I don't know why many of the other high value cards wouldn't also be faked. Same, if uh, if they fake the Pokemon in the same case, the same expensive case, um, why why are they not faking the magic cards too? Like, it's all it's all fake. Introducing Robert Huff, or you can call him Robbie if you're BFFs, uh, like we're going to be almost certainly. As you can tell by his profile picture, not exactly a tech savvy individual. Okay, so someone who shares boomer memes, football memes, takes pictures of themselves from their lap, uses the weird Facebook frame junk, doesn't know tech. So we, we've got to ask, who helped him with the fake site, burner phone, etc.? Uh, and also, it's kind of it's kind of funny here, and getting some serious Ace Ventura laces out vibes uh, from the, from all the Tom Brady hate on the on the images here. But yeah, there's a, he's got somebody that's doing this stuff for him, whether they're in the know or not about what he's doing with the uh, the fake website, what he's doing uh, with the burner phone. That uh, that is to be determined. So people are going to ask, I know what the question on your mind is, how do we know it's Robbie? Well, I had a couple people ask if they should go check out the location in person. Of course, I advised against it entirely because I don't want to be responsible for someone else being harmed. Uh, whether it happens or not, the risk is not worth it to me to send somebody into a dangerous situation, which is probably, you know, a, a very big possibility. So, um, without my knowledge of them doing it, kind of like Skunk Works, uh, the, the channel on screen here, uh, decided to take a road trip and check out the uh, unit in person. And uh, who was there to meet them? Expecting $75,000 in cash. Robbie. I'm going to uh, link their channel below. Uh, they got a uh, 21 subscribers, but uh, it looks like they can. Uh, they got some promising investigative work ahead of them. So uh, please go check them out. Give them a give them a sub, and uh, and check out the the videos themselves. So you can watch the interaction they had with uh, with Robbie himself there at the uh, at the unit. Uh, we got the uh, the here's a little 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 cap from it. Um, little section of it where they're uh, we got the the storage unit in the background there behind his truck uh, and just for future reference this is the the location where they had the moving company uh, advertised the the fake moving company this is this is where it went down so he was actually there I uh, I had my doubts of whether he was actually going to be at the uh, the location itself but he was they showed up uh, they gave him some excuses about how they didn't have the seventy five thousand dollars yet uh, but they were going to get it to him uh, and they had a conversation so. Good work on their part. Uh, again, this is not something I suggest anyone does. I don't mind putting myself at risk in terms of harassment and or anything like that. But um, when anyone else does it, I, I don't. I don't want to. I don't want to put anyone else on the line. Just to, just to make that very clear. So they did a search for the license plate on his white Ford F three fifty, and voila, Robbie, who was there trying to scam them for seventy five k, comes up. So yeah, the counterfeit filled wooden box was actually at this location. There's no moving or storage company there. Uh, so he had it outside with him there waiting for somebody, waiting to, to rip somebody off. Okay, as usual with these uh, scammeronies, it's criminal record time. So we're going to take a look through here real quick. We're going to see what this dude is up to, what he's done. Allegedly. We're going again. We're not law enforcement, so this is uh, this is just what is accessible public information. We're going to take a look here. We're going to take a look at th through. We get um, we got some we got traffic galore. So we have driving while impaired. Um, we have some that's not specific. Driving while license revoked. We'll go through uh, misdemeanor stalking. Okay, communicating threats. That's pretty standard for scammers. Driving while license revoked. We have defrauding innkeeper. I'm not sure what that means. If there are any lawyers in the chat, they can uh, then let me know. It sounds like something from like a from a video game. Like uh, if you were in Fable and you didn't pay to to stay the stay at the inn. <laughs> Another defrauding innkeeper. Defrauding innkeeper. Apparently that's a a common common thing. We got uh, expired registration. So it'd be interesting to see if he's even. Uh, registered and insured on that uh, that vehicle that he's got in the parking lot there that he's been camping out in. Um, 
We have open container of alcohol, so drink, drinking and driving, and driving without uh, the credentials seems to be a, a theme with our boy Robbie. Uh, driving while impaired, once again. Driving while license revoked. Uh, here we got we got more with the with the alcohol open container. We got registration. We got no insurance. Very very nice. Very nice charges. Um, yeah, just more of the same. A lot of uh, we get stolen motor vehicle. That's a that's a felony. That's a good one. <laughs> Possession of stolen goods. Okay, so that maybe that checks out for the uh, the stolen goods that were in the the unit itself. I guess that kind of makes sense. This is going all the way back to 2004, mind you, but uh, it seems that our boy Robbie hasn't changed his ways, and uh, it just it just keeps going. There's a lot of stuff that's not specified here, but uh, just to give you guys a good idea, um, there's there's a lot of it. There's a there's a variety, and there's a lot of it. Most of it has to do with uh, not following the laws of driving, whether it's stolen vehicles, drinking and driving, open container while drinking, etc., etc. The boy likes to, he likes to drink and drive. Not only that, sometimes I guess he steals the vehicle. Um, and other times he stalks you and or threatens you. Good to know. So, yeah, be a little bit careful, guys. So, what we have here is what is believed to be Robbie's eBay profile. So, you take a look here. Uh, and this was a, this was a little bit misleading, I think. Um, but, um, let's, let's take a look. What, what's he selling? What did he sell in the past? There's no current listings. So it seems that he's made his way away, away from eBay. Uh, we have all kinds of cool stuff here. We have t-shirts, which are interesting. So like, would he be selling counterfeit t-shirts? Maybe, maybe he's buying and selling counterfeit t-shirts. Who knows? Uh, we got, uh, we got a lot of signed photos, which is a little bit alarming, uh, because if somebody's selling a, a, a unit, a storage pod, wooden storage pod filled with counterfeit goods, stolen goods, uh, stolen good, I guess, uh, is, is, is he selling real signed items? I kinda, I have my doubts. I absolutely have my doubts. Um, and I would say with almost certainty that, the, that they're probably counterfeit. And uh, so he has he has sold one. Um, if you can see here, uh, there's a lot of uh, hidden, a lot of private listings that we can't uh, see what the item is itself. But uh, we do know that uh, Robbie underscore fifty one sixty four did at one point sell a Pokemon card because it's uh, it's the record is here on uh, Maven.io, which is kind of cool. Uh, this one looks like it's real though, so. Congrats, you, you sold a real one. So at least he's familiar with trading cards to some degree. Uh, clearly not good enough to uh, to make a, a a storage unit that would fool uh, experts. Um, but it's good enough to, to fool people as dumb as Desolator. So there's always that. Next, we have Robbie, who is um, still claiming to be the operations manager at Creative Color, a local business. Um, I don't know why. He still has this profession listed even though he hasn't been there for somewhere around eight years uh, i figured this was where he was printing the autographed photos and t-shirts because that's what they do as a, a a print company um maybe even printed the pokemon and magic the gathering cards at work i was able to get a hold of the owner after a little bit of a, a struggle uh, and uh, he he didn't seem all that surprised, but uh, but yeah, he did. Just, he, I wanted to make sure that uh, that the print company had nothing to do with it, uh, and uh, that they can distance themselves from the the, the bad actions of uh, Robbie Robertson here, Robbie McRob Rob. So on screen here we have the building in question, the the, the one where the the moving company is supposedly located, uh, the one where. The, the boys met up with with Robbie uh, and uh, so it's uh, it's marked as 111 here but it's 109 on one side 111 on the other side same structure two different addresses um, we're gonna ask why is Robbie at the 109 uh, Juliet address what's he doing there how is he what's surely he can't be just hanging out there or someone would ask him what the hell he was doing and after extensive digging and probably 50 plus phone calls over the last couple days I got to talk to the owner of the building 
So, guess what? He tells me that Robbie is leasing Suite 109 and had been before they purchased the building in recent times. So, um, from the, the owner's perspective, he was saying that there's little to no traffic there uh, and no indication of there being a moving or storage company run out of it. Surprise, surprise. Um, that he, he confirmed that he does see Robbie there sitting in his truck at times, and uh, apparently his lease is supposed to end soon, so that's probably why Robbie feels like he can rip somebody off there and, and then just be done and leave. All right, it's time for the fun part. It's the desolator shit-talking time because, um, you know, we're just going to have to cover some of his shit-tier logic before watching the recent criticism, I guess, that, he's, that he put out. Uh, the flip-flopping continues, and he now seems to want to let on less and less that he thought they could be real in the beginning. So if you watched his first video or my last video, he makes it very clear that he thinks the cards could be real. Look at that title. And uh, just how he talks about not wanting someone to steal all the uh, very valuable cards. The, the shitty Photoshop job that he did with the case to, to hide the fact that it was in a, a wooden box so people wouldn't go there and, and, <laughs> and rob it. So... Let's uh, let's take a look at this clip here. This is a pretty good one. Um, let's listen in. Here's the fun part: those black cases with with the custom hangers, the bolts, the brass, the down lighting, and all the stuff. Those are a thousand dollars a piece. So if you were in, those are counterfeit land. I don't know many people that drop two thousand dollars, a thousand a piece, on, on those display cases and then puts fakes in them. Okay, so I, I guess the justification, the biggest justification here, he says this multiple times. I don't feel like going to dig up the other examples of where he's talking about these $1,000 cases. But um, apparently someone told him they were $1,000 and he's just running with it. Uh, I got bad news for you, does it later. Uh, we have... Uh, we have Silent Recon 2 on Twitter who uh, who sent me this this nice image here of a big card display uh, for $80 plus tax in stock. Um, so... So, so much for that, huh? Thousand, thousand dollar cases. And the, the worst part is he kept just like, he said it like fucking 10 times. And uh, he just wanted to pound the fact that no one would put counterfeits in these. So they, there's a good chance that they're real, right? For future reference, because he's going to bring it up, we have these Suncast cases. Uh, they're shipped for just under $69. So keep that in, keep that in mind for the uh, the most recent video that he made. I know of all the people with half a brain uh, know that the exhibitor pass was clearly bait for the unit, along with some other items that were clearly put in certain places to make you think, uh, if you're dumb, like Desolator, that uh, the unit is real. Uh, I, I don't know if Desolator is under the impression that these these passes, whether they're exhibitors, whether they're press, whoever else, uh, that they just disappear after the convention, or you got to turn them in and they incinerate them, um, and uh, that they don't just end up within whatever else or sold on ebay for ten dollars i i don't know where his logic is there i don't know where his logic is anywhere um i i don't know i don't know if he's trying to kid himself or anyone else that's watching but uh again just really really fucking dumb i was under the impression that he had enough at this point and didn't want to make a follow-up video but it happened. He decided to stream at the same time as my last premiere and got absolutely spanked in terms of viewers. Best part about it, he hid the VOD, likely because he was embarrassed. And uh, we also have to ask, was he, was he streaming at the same time so he could let on that he wasn't going to watch my last video? Maybe, maybe he was delusional and thought that somehow he was going to like hurt my viewer count? I, I don't get it. There's got to be probably some reason behind it there, but uh, you know what? Let's let's listen to a couple promises he made since then for a video. We got some audio clips here. There's no point in even showing his video because it's just a static image. You guys know that. And I will respond to this absolute non-traversy with that dumbass Pokemon guy tomorrow. If I can even motivate myself enough to give a shit. But he did say, you know, completely incorrect things about me. So, uh, oh, and he did violate YouTube's terms of service too. That's painting a pretty big bullseye in your head, don't you think? Well, he's about to learn who he's messing with very shortly, so watch for that one. Subscribe if you don't want to miss it, and I'll see you guys next time. Maybe maybe this is his method of like getting views on his other shit videos. He gets some extra views because at the end he keeps promising that he's going to like clap me back, but Alright, here's the here's the most recent one. 
And uh, I was kind of surprised that he even like talked about it since then because he claimed that he was going to make a video. It wasn't really happening. And uh, and then and then this popped up recently. And yeah, I'll make a response to that sad, pathetic, angry little liar from the Pokemon channel eventually. Probably this weekend because I just don't give a crap. It's dumb, petty drama, and he's just a sad, pathetic person. But he is spreading lies about me, and that ain't going to go unanswered. So watch for a big video full of things I never said, and then followed by things he did say that are probably going to get his channel deleted. So hey, stay tuned for some drama too, apparently, and I'll see you guys next video. Okay, so um, it seems like he's even flip-flopping about whether or not he cares about my opinion uh, at this point. Uh, it seems to be a theme with him. Uh, can anyone in the comment section, in the chat, in the side chat, can you can you tell me? Do you guys think he cares? Does he care, guys? And uh, I think it goes without saying, similar to the uh, Carabooner, he, he talks big for someone who is afraid to show his own face on camera. You should be embarrassed. I'm going to embarrass you again. All right, quick uh, clip here for reference. We're going to take a, a but listen. We've got someone involved absolutely screwing things up. It wouldn't be the internet if it wasn't. So I'm not going to say who it is, but you know who you are and tell your stupid little fanboys to stop spamming my comment section or your sock puppet accounts or whatever's going on. I'm sick of hearing about you. Okay. You have like 10 K subs. I doubt that many people came over here without you prompting them to. So, so you guys know that I didn't prompt anyone to, but uh, it's weird. He, he, since he likes to talk trash about my 10 K subs and sock puppet accounts. Um, again, guys, you don't need to go pay attention to him. We can, uh, we can make fun of him here. Uh, if we need to, uh, there's no reason to go over and harass someone's channel, even though he locks down the comments anyway. So I don't know what he's complaining about. Um, the, the, the biggest thing here is sub number seems to be really important to him. So uh, let's take a look at his social blade. All right. So most of you should know, if not, I'll let you know right now. I usually don't care about numbers, but if someone's going to flex on me with numbers, at least have the numbers to flex on me. Jesus Christ! Look at this! Look at this thing! This is like a heart. It's like a heartbeat monitor. We got the we got the ups and downs. And no, those downs aren't just because they're down relative to what's usual. It's down because it's negative subscribers. It's pretty pretty embarrassing. So um, all we have to do is take a look here, and we'll see that I have more views every single month in 2022, which is hard to do as a small 10k. <laughs> some youtuber compared to this big behemoth of a 50k maxed out channel as we'll hear him talk about and um so if we uh if we scroll down here uh we can we can see here video views um so all below what i have received uh, in in this year uh for somebody that's such a veteran and such a such a pillar in the magic community and on youtube you would you would think people would watch your videos and it's weird to me that they don't, but you know what? That's uh, that's on them. And uh, it's really weird here. Usually, you don't uh, you don't see the the number here of subscribers go below zero. But uh, it, apparently, Social Blade had to make an exception for Desolator here, um, so that uh, they could show how many subscribers he was losing in these months. So uh, we got minus three hundred, minus one hundred, minus two hundred, minus a hundred, minus a hundred. Um, I didn't think it was possible. You would think that if you were making decent content that people wanted to watch, it, it, like, you wouldn't, you wouldn't be hemorrhaging subscribers. I don't know what this adds up to. If someone wants to do the math, I couldn't give two shits, but it, it doesn't look like you're, you're very far ahead here. I, I could probably just stop uploading and still surpass you. Like, it, if you're just going to keep losing subscribers, you're going to be down here in the 10k boat with me pretty soon. All right. Let's uh, see what the flip-flopping Desolator is flip-flopping about now. As usual, he gets himself very worked up, and it's hilarious. He's claiming that I lied about him, but doesn't really show where I'm lying about him. Um, I don't know if it's because he's trying to backtrack on the dumb things that he said or that he thought in the past. Uh, so he's, uh, I guess he's going to say that I'm lying now. Uh, uh, credit, though, to him. This, this is probably the most editing he's ever done um, by inserting a few clips at me at the start uh, where I'm just calling him dumb. I, I don't know if that's where he thinks I'm I'm lying. I'm not. It's it's very subjective uh, for me to call you dumb, but I think uh, everyone probably agrees. At least most people. Um, note to self. Note to everyone out there. Um, you will gain an instant thirty IQ points uh, just by not being subscribed to to Desolator Magic. So for what that's worth, if you if you need to 
If you need to get a little bit smarter, it's a good way to do so. All right, um, we're gonna 1.25x them. I told PK I'd try to keep this around an hour, so we're gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna try not to slow it down too much. Hey guys, Desolate Magic here, and I put off making this video because it's just not worth the stupid petty drama. And watching someone make a mess. You were talking about it constantly. It's a mistake, and then try to cover for themselves by doubling and tripling down is pretty sad. But he's way past triple at this point, and now he's just lying about me. So um, let's just clear some stuff up. So an angry little man with an angry little channel full of angry little children decided to uh, disagree with my video, telling him that he jumped to a conclusion a little too quickly and didn't investigate properly, both of which are completely true. Uh, well, we just saw two follow-up videos that showed that I was extremely correct on almost everything. So I don't, I don't know where he's getting this. Um, I'm pretty sure he's the one that's doubling down on the fact that he thought the cards were real. He's still gonna like try and mix in the fact that they could have been real, just to like make himself look less stupid, I guess. But Let's play some highlights. Uh, I don't know if that's because he's dumb, hopeful, um, maybe a mix of both. Suspiciously high bids, but uh, that could have been desolator dummies bidding against each other. Uh, I heard they like to do that. I made my video after it was already removed, by the way. Don't worry, I, I got it taken <laughs> care of. You can sit back and... Oh, by the way, the, the desolator dummies thing doesn't necessarily mean that they took your advice and bid on it. It's just meant that they were as dumb as you and thought the cards were real. Suck a fat one. He deserves every bit of this, and we're gonna rag on him even harder when we uh, when we we scroll through that one. Absolutely clueless, clueless mother. F so we're gonna put him in his place. Dumb. I like how he he's really concerned about his ad revenue, so he's 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 editing he's editing out all the bad words that I said. Ass that he is, and you know what? You deserve it every bit of it. After making this fucking video, I'm gonna rub it in your face so fucking hard. Let's just get one thing straight right off the bat. I never said they were real. The first video was titled the way it was, so it would get the maximum amount of views. And I think I said, although I did record the audio twice because of a glitch, that yeah, you see a Lotus anywhere, you see Power 9 anywhere, just assume it's fake. I don't care where it is, what the context is, but there was more evidence that I uncovered that made me think, okay, there is the faintest chance that these are real, and if so, they are stolen. Oh, and uh, the most likely scenario is that all of these were stolen, or the person really didn't know what they had, or they, the person behind them. You thought they were all stolen, so you thought everything was real by default because it was stolen property. This fell for a lot of, you know, counterfeits that they bought. But in any case, a tiny amount of this stuff might be real then. Especially since there was stolen content already confirmed in here that if this person was stealing from multiple shops because the Hobbit cutout was... There was one item stolen, and that was allegedly stolen from a bookstore. Stolen from a shop. But yeah, they probably a got a lot of counterfeits. Bookstore. But they probably got a couple real ones. But that was so obvious I barely even brought it up in my video, but in case people were like that stupid, I said it in the first two minutes, and you just kind of breeze past that, didn't you? And that mixes everything up. <laughs> I watched because the whole video. Because do you steal counterfeits? I mean, yeah, if you're an idiot. But we'll get into the whole theft thing and the evidence and who I talk to and all this stuff that completely undercuts his little knee-jerk reaction. But uh, he right. does get to admitting that he has absolutely no idea, he backpedals completely, if these are real or not. The entirety of his argument is, well, I don't know anything about magic cards, but if the Pokemon cards next to it are fake, which, yes, they were, oh my god, even I could tell. The holofoil pattern- Wait, 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 you could tell, you never mentioned anything about fake Pokemon cards or fake anything in your, in your first video. Never. Not once. I watched it. If anyone can give me a timestamp to where he said that there's any chance- that anything was fake in there, in, ter in terms of like showing, hey, the Pokemon cards are fake, by all means, point me, point me to a link. You didn't say that because you didn't know, and you're gonna admit to it here in your own video, in full context. Pattern was printed directly on the card, so obviously the magic cards are fake too. Well, except that uh, mm -hmm. it appeared that this was stolen property. A bunch of the other stuff was expensive and genuine, and from the 90s. So once you look at all the, there was nothing else that was expensive. There was no expensive item within that. We already looked at the, uh, at the expensive things that he's claiming are expensive. They weren't expensive evidence boy jumping to that conclusion yeah you're very lucky you backpedaled in here but in both videos i said yeah you look at something like this and you're like just in context i don't, I don't the word back need backpedal. photos colors and anything they're probably fake however i wanted to make very sure i handled this very carefully because if they're real then we've got a bit of a situation if whoa 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 so now you're saying if they're real and you thought they were real even one of them is real. Look, look at the way they're arranged. A, a crazy person arranged these. And you can't see clearly that. the very like bottom right. Okay, you can't say, yep, every single one. Not that it's in a proper resolution to even debunk any of these. And the way that they're in the little acrylic holders, you can kind of see the edge, but you kind of can't. Like what's white is actually like the gap. But we'll get into the details after, uh, well, let's just play more of what he said because that's the best evidence to show what went. So his argument here, I guess, is the fact that uh, like, I'm just because you, you can't prove every single card in here is fake. So, you know, that one on the bottom right, that might be a real magic card. <laughs> what? Oh, if all the rest of them are fake, that we can tell, they're all fake. There's no there's no mixing proxies, proxies with like mint copies of Power 9, etc. That's just the dumbest shit. And again, he's just trying to like make himself to like dig himself out of this hole of stupidity and he's it's just he's just making it worse
went through his head. Warning, very cringe content. Very so cringe. One hundred percent knew that they were fake. All of the magic, all, all of the cards look like they're brand new because they're all printed mm -hmm. in recent times. Or they were putting those cases in 1995. Maybe some. Did they have magnetic cases in 1995? They didn't. They would be in screw down cases or something. Or you mean the like the outer cases, the the eighty dollar outer cases that you thought were a thousand dollars? Collectors, I know the, the magic cards here are a little bit harder to uh, determine whether they're fake or not because there's no hollow foil pattern. But I'm sure somebody can see the colors on these and uh, and let us know down below. Oh, if he backpedaled any further from his original assessment, which he seemed really sure of. We had somebody that uh, that was able to uh, specify certain cards that were certainly fake within the cabinet. Thank you. Thank you to the, the person without 50,000 subscribers and making magic content for seven years, only at 50k. Of the video footage would actually start playing backwards. Oh, the color and the lighting. From a garbage cell phone shot done unprofessionally with somebody reaching their hand in to snap a shot of it. Really. Under bad lighting. And the colors give it away. Do you see why he has no idea what he's talking about? There's absolutely no rhyme or reason to why these are in the order that they're in. What does that mean? Why would that matter? That, to me, that just says the person didn't know what they had, which would match the narrative. That would explain why somebody left them unpaid in a storage facility. Uh, we got we got duplicates of all this stuff. Again, all of it uh, in these cases. So for somebody that was saying, he's, in, he's at the start and he's claiming that he, he knew that they were probably fake, but now he's making all these arguments for why they, they're real or why they could be real. For, for somebody that didn't, has nothing on the line and didn't think they were real to begin with, I don't know why you're f fighting so hard to prove that they could be. Cases of, uh, Guys, if they're counterfeit, you can't have duplicates. You're only allowed to have one counterfeit. Everybody knows that. Oh, and you're not allowed to put them in cases if they're counterfeits, too. I don't know if you knew that. What even is this? He's just, like, babbling on about non-evidence. He has no evidence. Wait, you're, you're the one that said that they wouldn't put... Well, can we go back? Can you guys go back in this video and watch that uh, the clip where he said that people wouldn't put uh, counterfeits in $1,000 cases? $80 cases, but he thought they were $1,000 cases. Okay, I'll save you his cringe, smug, trash nonsense. I'll just tell you what he said. Mm. So the contents are laid out in a way that's fake. How would you- AKA, I got tired of editing in clips of him saying I'm f fucking dumb. <laughs> them out. Oh, you take the, the fragile glass, you put that on the bottom, and then you put the heaviest cards on top of it. There you go. And they are allowed to reach in and prop up stuff for the photos. I mean, if, if this was like a moving thing, because they do moving and storage, if this was on the back of a truck and those things were upright, yeah, that's insane. But you look at the rest of it, how else would you stack this? It's, it's not on a truck. Items in storage facilities. If you looked into anything, you'd know it wasn't that. on a truck. And yes, they are allowed, as far as I know, because I didn't say otherwise, to make things look like visible, turn some things over and stage it a little bit for a photo. But the fragile things are on the edges. The, the more expensive stuff is on the front. He's getting worked up, guys. Crap that's He's getting worked the up. Back. How else would you stack this if you're just some person putting stuff in here? Uh, he later proposes, well, nobody would abandon this storage facility if they had this kind of stuff in it. Nobody would put several million dollars worth of cards in a storage facility. Doesn't that just scream to you that either they're fake and who knows what's going on here? I, I propose several different theories that I guess he's just... Oh, I guess, I guess and, now uh, we're going back to their fake now. Had, or it was a thief. It was staged. It's all fake and, and it was staged. We jail. showed everything. Other theory that I proposed all we showed more than we needed videos. to. Somebody bought these in the 90s when they weren't that expensive and then they died suddenly or who knows. And then this wasn't delivered correctly, wasn't paid for, it was just put in storage and they're like, ah, it's just stuff we don't want to mess with, whatever, take it. I know how storage auctions work. Okay, all the different circumstances that can lead up to it. Who knows? Either he's dumb or didn't watch my second video. Didn't know what he had. That would explain it too. And keep in mind, a little spoiler alert for you: some of the property was confirmed to be stolen. So one item. Match with his narrative. So not of what confirmed. He's up on, uh, one item, not confirmed. Someone that has their name on it claims that it was stolen years ago, as part of their mail. One item, single item, the Hobbit item on the right side, from a bookstore. One item. Oh, the Pokemon cards are fake, so the Magic cards are fake. But he doesn't know anything about Magic cards, so guys, just because they're rare and expensive, that means that they're fake, obviously. Yeah, most of the time, it's No, the oh, fact that they're clearly oh, counterfeits. Oh, whoops. Oh, look at that. Oh. Okay, here we... So he's going to show us all these, like, graded four. Uh, you can see that some of them are signed, some of them are scuffed up. So they're mostly all scuffed up because it's been that long. Uh, not a, a case full of mint condition copies to the, to the point so many that they couldn't even fit them all. They had to have them in the little plastic container up front. Oh boy, that's bad timing, isn't it? Yeah, collections like this come up all the time. Oh, must be some rich investor, but nope, nope. Desolator, no, just, uh, like just, it's okay. The just take the L, just tell yeah. us. But how'd they get to Germany that's so far fetched? Well, they did. Hey, here, here's three lotuses. Look at that, three lotuses. I believe Four and 8.5 and a, point five and a well, two. Well, five lotuses, it's fake. Well, here's three lotuses and they're not. Oh, and wait a minute. If that was a direct quote, why didn't you clip it? Too fucking lazy to, to edit that or to find the clip? Wait a minute, that case in the front is from 1995, huh? It is. And the property on the right is stolen. Huh. That's why I made there, the case in the front. Um, you can you can buy that. It's a very popular case. It doesn't even have the stickers on it anymore. 
And as we saw, it's $68 in some sense delivered. The video in the first two minutes said, yeah, they could be counterfeit. Like I almost like said it jokingly because duh, they're power nine, they could be counterfeit. It almost went without saying for all but the stupidest possible viewers. And then I reiterated it because I found out, wow, there's a lot of stupid viewers mm -hmm. out there in my second video. Mm -hmm. yeah, options like this come up all the time. Mm -hmm. okay. Watsi employees have stuff like this in their houses. So when I put all the evidence together, did the investigation- Watsi employees have the, the most recent Pokemon sets? And talked to the guy, told him they're probably counterfeit, asked about if he knew anyone, looked into which con that was and when it was. Everything tied together to this person either didn't know what they had or it's all stolen. And some of it or most of it or part of it is counterfeit. But we don't know unless we're in front of it. Except the Pokemon cards, my gosh. But I looked at them for about six seconds because I don't care about Pokemon cards. Okay, so you didn't notice the Pokemon cards. Here's he, He's going to tell us he didn't notice the fake Pokemon cards. That's why it wasn't part of his video. Because he didn't notice. Because he didn't bother to look. Because he was excited to clickbait and say like, hey, look, this is, he, he found out one item was stolen and now he's going to run with it. The fact that, oh, maybe all the rest of this magic is real. I got to, I got to use my MS paint skills and hide the background so no one can track this down and steal all this valuable shit. So if even one of these was real, because if you arrange them like that and they're from different sets and stuff, if you buy counterfeits, you buy them all at once. It's still my opinion that these are in a case to show, like, here's a bunch of counterfeits, watch out. Like, it was like a warning thing from a store. As I stated in the video, we don't, we'll get into all the different scenarios. I stated a lot of things in the video. There's a lot of backtracking. You have a couple functioning brain cells and think about this a little longer than he did. Let me lay out his theory versus my theory. My theory was that it's stolen, the person didn't know what they had, or they're fake. His theory is that this was one giant conspiracy set up by the storage company, it and was. also they don't exist, I don't know. No, it wasn't. It was the moving and storage company that doesn't exist. We just proved it. I showed you the, the person behind the entire thing. Showed you the location. Showed you it doesn't exist. Talk to the person that owns the building. They confirmed that it doesn't exist. I, what did you show us? You showed us the fact that you can flip-flop and that you know nothing about counterfeits and that you can't pick out the fact that these were fake from the beginning. You should have known right away. You should have been able to lock, look through the locker. Instead, you rushed out and made a uh, jillion so dollar okay, stolen magic collection. Okay, somebody will bid way too much on this. You know, maybe we can take somebody for several thousand dollars. It's the scam of the century. So they went and bought a vintage made in 1995 Suncast Just Trading card collector case, which is worth a pretty penny. And like I said, was only made. Well, pretty penny is $69 a lot of money to you. Does it later? Are you okay? Because you were, you, you were also threatening uh, something to do with strikes and uh, some sort of a legal action, which would be required for that. Um, if you if you think sixty sixty nine dollars is a lot of money, you might want to shut the fuck up. Made in 1995, they threw that in there for some reason. They bought a whole bunch of what appears to be, I guess, sealed Pokemon products, or were those like were the cards put back in them, or the storage boxes? I don't know. I don't know Pokemon. Then they bought a whole bunch of expensive deck boxes, threw those in there too. Oh, and those black cases, people are telling me those things are mad money. I, I, nobody sent me a direct link, but people have said, oh, I know oh, what that oh. is. Those are like super, super. It's okay. We got the direct link for you in this video. You can check out the eighty dollars. That it costs to buy one. You're full of shit. Super hyper expensive. I think they're like backlit with LEDs or something. I don't know. I heard all kinds of accounts, but every single person told me those are extremely expensive because I said they were really cheapy looking in one of my videos. In fact, I believe I said that was evidence for them being fake because they're in the world's cheapest case. <laughs> no, you but didn't. Every single comment and Discord message and everything was, oh, those are actually really expensive. I know what those are. I've seen them before. Those are crazy expensive because they're like custom brass, you know, custom tight hangers. It's hard to get like good opinions in your Discord and or your uh, comment section when you lock everything down. To the point uh, that people don't even bother to comment. Upwards of a couple hundred dollars a piece. So they went and got those two. I mean, what are we at so far? A couple grand? Then they went on the auction website, <laughs> marked the listing as 72 hours must pick up, cash in person only, no credit card and no checks. Even though they knew it was going to go for like, you know, 10,000 plus, they wanted 10 grand cash. Oh, and then he said it was money laundering. Oh, so the, the bidder was in on it too. So here he's going to go off on a tangent about how I said that it, it's my entire theory is now revolving around the fact that I said at one point that it wouldn't surprise me if this was money laundering, but he's going to run with this because it's the only thing that I didn't get right because it actually ended up being at the location and they were actually just trying to rip people off. So that was what that was one possibility. Um, but uh, here, he's let him let him go with it. It's it's his 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 little win, his little win from this little YouTuber. Ooh. Okay, you go on a public website with a paper trail. You have somebody bid with like a verified who knows, you know, personal financial information, credit card ID, all that stuff. I don't know. I don't use the site. They pay like a deposit and the sales tax or something like that. I think with the site. So then they need like a credit card, maybe a valid shipping address. So we're already like, I don't think he knows how cash money laundering works because the YouTube rules, I'm not going to like give you a how to, but that ain't how you do it. You want like an actual cash thing where it's like 
anonymous cash, like an arcade or a laundromat or a strip club or a casino, not a gigantic, you know, super vetted and scrutinized by the feds auction website. And then if you don't want to get audited, you don't say, oh yeah, we sold this for 200. We sold this. We had a couple, you know, monthly charges of 50 bucks a month for uh, the rentals. We had that under books Then we had $250,000 in a cash auction and it was paid in cash in person. Don't worry. We gave them a receipt. You are getting audited. What about this was supposed to work? He's like, it's the crime of the century. It's all money laundering. The bid was $253,000 when I last saw it. And remember, he's assuming those bids were real and not just troll bids. I guess he's never been on eBay or the internet. And if it wasn't money laundering, I already said this. You can't just take out like 100K cash. So hold on. You, let me get this. You're going to believe, first of all, that the cards are real, but the bids are fake. That's that's your stance, I guess, at this point. I can't fucking tell because you flop harder than Flipper the Dolphin. And this is ridiculous. Like, just make up your mind. Say what you need to say, what you thought. Um, clearly, you have no idea what the fuck you're talking about. Because if you watched my second video, you would see that all the evidence is laid out to the point that it's a fake business. And then this one here, this is just more information showing exactly who did it and how they did it. So, if you, again, if you would like to reference my last video or this video, go ahead. Just put me in the, uh, the description. Credit to Rattle Pokemon for uh, solving all the mysteries with zero notice from a bank, okay, just because you won an auction and you ain't taking the money out until you win the auction. Then you got to drive across the country to the place, pick it up in person only, no shipping, and pay cash. What about that? After they staged it with thousands of dollars worth of product in cases and 1995 vintage collectibles is supposed to be the criminal scheme of the century. What about any of this makes an ounce of sense? So this last part debunks absolutely anything he was saying. His entire theory just goes out the window. So, so my, the my entire theory, because I said it wouldn't surprise me if this was money laundering of some sort, that, that wasn't the entire, the entire theory was the fact that this was staged, that it was all counterfeits and that it was staged. Not all counterfeits, sorry, I don't want to misspeak and give them a little bit of leverage to like call me a liar or something. All of the valuable items within the locker are fake. All of the items that you're giving a fake value to don't actually have that value because you can't be bothered to look it up because you don't look anything up because you're a lazy motherfucker. And I, I don't know if it can make it any easier for me to walk all over you because I actually look into all this stuff and you don't. Like it, it's just, it just makes me feel so fucking smart. It's ridiculous. It's like this huge ego boost that like I'm the smartest person in the world, but all I had to do was fucking look into all this stuff and you didn't. The masterminds decided to, to stage this and set it up and it's also perfect. We're gonna make so much money off this scam. Oh my gosh, somebody's gonna bid way too much. And they just meticulously put everything out for the perfect photo and then left a stolen Hobbit promotional cutout on the right side with the shipping mm. address on the back of it facing the camera. Because it's a criminal. A picture of it with enough resolution and clarity. Who's trying to, to fake a storage locker. An address of who it was stolen it from. Just, I don't think that the storage company years ago went to some bookstore, which I did verify all this, by the way. That, that There's no storage company. There's, There's no storage, storage company, company Desolator. There's no this, storage the company. Oh, show, show, the, show the label, too. But I do think that if it's like, okay, this is this perfect setup. We got the angles. We got left, right. We got pictures of everything. Okay, that's perfect. You can kind of see this. Okay, we're all set. Wait, maybe we shouldn't show a shipping label. Maybe we should take this out. What even is this? This isn't Pokemon or anything related. Oh crap, personally identifying information. Let's blur it. No, these people, they opened it up, they took some photos and they listed it and they marked it as cash only. They didn't know what they had. The owner of this didn't know what they had. Nobody knew what this was. I'll get to my theories on what's really going on here in a second. So guys, then- All right, he's gonna give us theories, but now that we know the entire story that it's a fake company made by a fake person that's a criminal, that has a criminal past, he set it all up. He met people there and tried to take $75,000 for them from them in exchange for the contents of this wooden box that are all counterfeit, but it's okay. He still has theories, guys. Don't worry, we're gonna listen to them. <sighs> After they rip off some, some rich investor person or whatever, some group of, you know, some business with these super convincing counterfeits, which they would have bought better looking counterfeits if they knew anything about collectible cards, enough to know to stage this and know what it They would have bought better looking counterfeits? It was, it was enough to make you question whether they were real or not. If they can fool a 50K, Magic the Gathering YouTuber, surely somebody's gonna bite on this, right? Unless maybe you just stumbled upon that 50k and people didn't realize how fucking stupid you are and how you don't know anything about magic. All it took was uh, was my video in the comment section for people to point out that they were fake. Or look at all the other items and realize, hey, these are fake. You don't even need to know the little meticulous details of the magic cards, which you should know. If you consume that much magic content and know all this stuff about how much the uh, the values of all these cards are, you would think you would know all the little nuances that 
proves that they're real or not. Outside of the fact that they're all pristine, perfectly cut, no damage, no wear, no dirt on all these white border, etc. when they're being stored in a, in a wooden box. That would sell for. But after they rip off some, some rich person on the order of, you know, 10, 20, 30, 200,000 dollars, they're not going to come back and burn your place down after they find out that they're fake. They're not going to come shoot up the place. Really. Because they are. They've got enough money to hire someone to do that. So how many holes did I just put in his theory that this was all... So, like, we just saw that he's not going to have a lease there anymore. Um, and it's not his building. It's a, it's a leased building. It's not his actual... It's not a business. It's just a... It's just a hole in the wall, little part of a subsection of a building that he's pretending to be a moving company. So he's not going to be there after you purchase it. He's not coming back. And other than the fact that we've discovered exactly who he is... I mean, holy fuck, Desolator, man. Like, I, I spelled it out in the last fucking video. And you're still, like, just... Your wheels are turning, but you're, you're not getting anywhere. There's no fucking tread left on this little brain of yours. Stage, it's all money laundering, it's all set up. Come on. Even I proposed a more realistic scenario that's still debunked. Everything was exactly as it sits here. And then they said... We could make more money if we throw in these two things at counterfeits and just plausible deniability. Maybe somebody would be dumb enough to pay a grand for it. Mm -mm. That's it. Done. All the rest was legit. I mean, well, we got the lion's eye sitting out. And I think we had like a foil for Citizen Charizard sitting in one of the boxes. Yeah, I don't know about that. I don't think they staged any of it. They just, why, why have that kind of heat? I mean, what would that take in? One to two grand? And they wouldn't want to play with fire with like... What? It's going to take in one to two grand? They, they He almost sold it in person for 75000 And it would have sold for more on the auction site. Oh, I bet this will go for $5 million, huh? Ooh, mark the listing as cash only. Like I said, it goes back to all the other evidence. None of this adds up to them being behind it. That That's just not logically possible. It just falls apart under any kind of thought scrutiny or investigation, none of which he actually did. So that's the story he was going with. To cover for the fact that he called the, not, not the storage company, he called the auction carrier and said, your listing contains counterfeit cards, which it did. It, those Pokemon cards, I don't need to be in front of them to tell you those are fake. Those are... Okay, now he's saying the Pokemon cards are fake. So he's going to admit that, but... Still, at the same time, he's not going to admit that the magic cards should have to a magic expert if he's claiming to be one at any point. I don't know if he has, guys. I'm sure he has. Uh, I think he had some beef with Rudy at one point. Uh, so surely he's a, he's a Magic the Gathering expert, and he should be able to point out the fact that these are not real cards. Even though he's going to say that the pictures were not very good, the pictures were pretty good. Are fake. But then I think he said like everything in there is fake and then they, they took mm -hmm. it down because everything of value, kind of heat, you know, so he was solely responsible for this going down, which then like, remember later in the video, he said, oh, it's all, it's all scam. It was staged by them and it's it was. money laundering all of the things you cannot money say because he didn't state it. It was, he said it was a facts. scam. That is what he was saying is going on. Accuse the business of that with really no evidence, barely circumstantial and none of the logic adds up. So that opens them up to any kind of defamation lawsuit if they really wanted to, like if they really, really wanted to, he does not look like he's desolator magic. You're, I don't know why you keep going on about this defamation lawsuit shit when I've proven inside and out that it's not even a company. Like, I don't know how fucking... I don't know, maybe you're pretending to be dumb in order to create this conflict, but I kind of have my dad. I think you're just actually really fucking dumb. Swimming in money, though. Now with that sub count. Oh, by the way, he came at me... <laughs> oh, my sub count. My sub count. Oh, no. Guys, my sub count. It's coming up again. Because my sub count, which is a little higher than his... Yeah, it's it's 51k. 50? 50k. 50.1. 50.1. I think he I think maybe he got up to 50.2. Yeah, 50.2. It's right there on the bottom there. Um 50.2. Uh, in 7 years, that's fucking pathetic. I'm sorry, but you shouldn't be swinging your dick to that. It's fucking embarrassing that uh, that you've been working on your channel for this long uh, and take pride in it and are going to slam people for having less subscribers than you when it took you 7 years to get 50k. Again, guys, if I don't hit 50k before seven years, I'm gone. I'm fucking, I'm done. Nobody tell him I run four other channels. I think it would make him a little mad, but he likes... Whoa, whoa, whoa. We're gonna, let's talk about his other channels. I, I think he has two of them linked in his bio, um, both of which have less than 4,000 subscribers. Uh, so by his logic, if we're gonna round my 17 down to 10, uh, that would round his channels either down to zero if we're going by the nearest... We're always, <laughs> we're always gonna, we're always gonna roll it down to uh, ten thousand. I guess it rolls it down to zero, or maybe uh, like his recent sub numbers uh, over the last year and certain months where it goes into the negatives. So I don't, I don't know if that's. 
fucking Jesus Christ. I'd like if you're gonna if you're gonna talk trash about numbers and stuff like that, which I don't like to do, but I think it's just fucking embarrassing that you don't realize that your channel fucking sucks and it's dead. And your other channels are smaller than mine. Used to say a lot of things without doing proper research. And honestly, back when I started and up until Magic started crashing hardcore, which I guess he also doesn't know about. Oh, here's the excuse. Magic crashed hardcore guy. That's that's why he doesn't have any subs. Doesn't have more subs. Depending upon what metric I was in the top three for a long time, Magic channels just don't get bigger than this without covering general TC. Whoa, 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 whoa. Magic channels do definitely get bigger than that. These are just towing the line and kissing Watsy's ass. Well, wait a second. So, last time I checked, um, Rudy was in the not kissing Watsy's ass, and he has 7x what you do. And he. Wait, it was this. You've been doing Magic content for seven years. Rudy just had his 6.9 year anniversary. So you've been doing magic content for the around the same amount of time as Rudy, but he has 7x your subscribers. But you're going to tell me that this is where it caps off? There's only 50,000 people that want to watch magic content that isn't approved? Okay. Well, I don't do that. That's the only thing that used to fly back then before people got wise to it in the last three years. And now everybody, including Hasbro's stockholders, have figured out what they're up to and caught up with what I've been saying about Watsi the whole time. Which is, they're a bunch of crooked assholes who are ruining the game. And, well, now they already have. But not everybody wanted to hear that. Thus my sub count. Thus me creating other channels that I actually care about. He just thought, oh, I could be the big savior. I, I could shut this down and then make a bunch of YouTube videos on it and, and get a bunch of views. Because he's desperate for views. It, it's clear he's one of those type of YouTubers who's like really, really desperate to become popular. He will do anything I don't know. about it. But unfortunately, with your personality and your pissy ass... I don't know about that. I think maybe... Maybe you might be desperate for views. It sounds like you're a little bit sad about your making some excuses here about your channel dying. I don't make excuses. If videos don't do well, it's because I didn't make a good video. Attitude and the way you treat people. You've just got a toxic fan base. And welcome to Leafy is Hair Land. Yeah, w welcome to the wake up call that most like YouTubers who cover Minecraft got. And prank channels where it's just cringy, obnoxious, poorly raised 12 year olds who are like, yeah. Yeah, I can be addicted to people too, except like he's not acting, he's not doing that for views. I, I get the impression he's just like that. And it kind of explains the lack of success on his channel. I'm being mean to you because you're an asshole and it's it's funny to me. You're actually worked up over this. I'm not. And I'll hate to say it, okay? I, I'm going all Dr. Phil on this, but I just want to give him a reality check. If you ever want to get anywhere or don't want to like get a tiny little bit of fame on the backs of horrible, horrible, toxic little kids, which is the only people who seem to watch your channel right now, you're going to want to be a little more likable. This, I hate everything and I have a bad attitude, yeah, doesn't fly anymore. And when it barely takes off, your community is not something you want to cater to. But all he cares about is popularity and money from what I've seen from his other content. So, you know, it is what it is. Just a little advice for somebody who's been on YouTube. Wasn't he saying that I didn't make any money because I didn't have as many subs as him? A hell of a lot longer than you. You are not going a good direction, both in your life and on YouTube. So then he just gets hung up on the exhibitor pass. Oh, it's just set out there. It's a little too perfect. Mm -hmm. A little too staged. The $10 exhibitor pass. Okay, theory number one. This person was an idiot. Idiots don't pay their bills, they're not financially responsible, and non-financially responsible idiots tend to buy counterfeits and think what they- Okay, we're gonna get into more theories that clearly aren't the correct theory, because everything points towards what I was talking about the majority of the time. Here, go go to town though, Desolator, Jesus Christ. He's gonna throw in m massively theory theories that just are gonna like, trace off from what I'm showing is the actual thing that happened, but go to town they have is expensive that explains the price of the cases and some other things we saw and then they the died 80 dollar cases or, who knows so someone put their stuff in storage and they kept thinking i should sell it i should sell it and then something happened to them or you know whatever however it ended up there could be anything people get hit by cars all the time okay so the person didn't know what they had but some of it might be legit but mostly counterfeits because they were a careless idiot that's theory number one. Oh, and they thought it'd be cool at the end of a thing to ask somebody for the exhibitor pass so that they could like it's like a cool one-of-a-kind collectible which also isn't worth anything theory number two this was a thief a thief stole the pass because somebody had it in the trash or sitting on a table while they were loading out and they walked off with it. Just like they walked off with a whole bunch of counterfeits, just like they walked off with a whole bunch of what sealed Pokemon, whatever else was in there. Or because they're a thief, they constantly tried to rip people off, unlike Craigslist and other local places or, you know, garage sales, flea markets, whatever. They just act like they don't know what they got. So they steal some people's stuff and then they sell counterfeits because they're a terrible person and then they didn't pay their, uh, you know, their storage fee because they're in jail or dead. But because they walked off with people's bags or people's deck. But at no point is it a possibility at all that it's just a fake company. That's it. No, no. I get. I did he what? Did you watch Desolator? Can you leave me a comment down below? Uh, I won't even filter it out. I won't even like have to approve it. You can just write whatever you want down there. But uh, if you could just leave a comment down below and add, can you confirm the fact that you watched the second video? Because it doesn't. It doesn't sound like you did. That or you. I don't know who you're. You're arguing with yourself here. It 
X or whatever at multiple different, you know, Comic-Con style events or TCG events. Then naturally they ended up with, you know, proxies slash fakes. Kind of makes sense when you see that some of the other property in there was stolen from a store. I think all of this is stolen. Deck boxes with real decks in them. Stolen from people who play at stores. I had some of my decks stolen. My friends had some decks stolen. Somebody tried to sell me a stolen deck when I owned my store, and it was from a competing store right down the damn street. People are this stupid. Can someone tell me where he's getting all these decks from? Is he talking about the little, the little plastic containers here with the proxies in them? Or the Pokemon ones in the middle? There's like Pokemon, the same plastic containers with all the proxies in them. I guess that's what he's talking about. Uh, I don't know. Maybe he thinks that those are deck boxes, the tins or the, the elite trainer boxes. And the number one and two reason that storage auctions go up for sales, not financers or people forgetting about them or whatever you said, death arrested. You tell me that that's not less reasonable than him going from, well, it's, it's all fraud. It's all set up. Oh, but, but oh, oh, wait, people bid on it. People bid really high. So some people must have had more confidence in it than I am. Oh, no, that's right. I only knew the Pokemon ones were fake. I don't actually have any evidence that the magic cards are fake other than it's a bunch of power nine. They're probably fake, but maybe not. Oh, okay. The storage company's in on it and it's money laundering. I'm sure when he sees this video, it's going to be aliens. Aliens set it up. This is a deep fake. It wasn't aliens. It was, it was Robert. It was Robbie. It was all fake and it was faked by Robbie and we're in the matrix and he just it keeps getting more ridiculous if you know you're already wrong just drop it so now i don't know if he's is he like all the the talk about me backtracking and all the talk here about how like if you know you're wrong just drop it like i don't know if he's if he's somehow confused himself into a circle of giving himself advice because this is like this is all things that i said to him and that he should be doing but now he's just focusing on, could you believe this magic YouTuber said these are real? Never said that. Said multiple times in both videos that they are probably fake and I think they're fake, but just in case they're not, can anybody ID them? Because I already had evidence that these were stolen from a shop. Nobody steal these. No one. Because I did more research. They were, they were stolen from a shop. <laughs> yeah, they were they were definitely stolen from a shop. Than you. Just like uh, the cutout was stolen, but the guy it was stolen from said, I don't have anything to do with any of the other property in there. So I don't know how basically my mail that got stolen out of my mailbox or out of my store, you know, the display that he was Years supposed ago. to get mailed how that ended up here but i don't have anything to do with the rest then how did it get put face to the wall not even knowing what it is until he said it into this staged I don't, thing what, how did why does he keep asking this we are like i already went through this that it was probably there because they knew the bookstore was closed surely they can figure out that much of their staging this and that people wouldn't be able to contact the bookstore because it's closed that happened why is that there why is the shipping info visible do they want to get caught? No, this is not staged by the storage company. That doesn't make any sense. Yes, there are stupid criminals everywhere, but it, it wasn't staged by the storage company because the storage company doesn't exist. The pretend storage company staged the whole thing. If you think that makes more sense, then some idiot thought he had real cards, put them in a storage, found out they were counterfeit, left them there. Like just something as simple as that. Or my theory no. that because uh, the Hobbit cutout was stolen from a store and then we've got the, the hand. Wait, I thought the last seven theories that you went through were the theories. I, I don't know why you want to make it everything except for the thing I was right about all around all, all along that <laughs> That it's staged it's staged you can make up as many different stories as you want They're all gonna be wrong because as we saw in the last video the one before that in this one it was staged Written uh, MTG unsorted on, on the back of the the white boxes in the back Which could be a collector but it could just be bulk from a store a store went out and then this was their inventory which sure collectible vintage reseller you know whatever maybe they have a brick and mortar maybe they don't and then they died they went under you know, covid hit the shops hard we all know this and they had on the wall you know one side of the wall all fake pokemon cards on the other side all fake magic gathering cards with a little sign under it that says we don't buy counterfeits and people walk in they're like whoa power nine do you know what you have there and then the owner goes yeah but they're fake you know it's like an educational thing it's like a joke it's a puller it's a funny thing to look at on the wall but no let, let's go straight to quarter million dollar money laundering operation through a public website that's visible to the irs that makes more sense. So he's going to bring up the money laundering thing again. Again, guys, I mentioned at one point in time that it, it wouldn't surprise me if it was money laundering. Um, but he's going to run with that because that's the only thing that uh, that I wasn't dead on about. And then to turn around and call me stupid and say that I said something I didn't say because you just looked at the title of my video. Really? And then double down and triple down and quadruple down. Well, congratulations, rattle Pokemon. You looked like a complete. I think that voice to say like saying my name, but now he says it. At least he said it right, though. And utter moron for like the fifth time. I suggest you stop talking about this if you want to keep any ounce of respect. But then again, with your attitude, your content, your, your channel almost growth, you're not getting anywhere anyway, so. I get, I, my channel growth is far superior to yours. I don't know if you realize this, but like within the last year, I've fucking shit all over your channel.
And, uh, boy, you better hope that the YouTube moderators don't catch wind of half the shit you said in your video. People so have like, gotten strikes for a lot less. Strike me. So the last I dare you. To Bring your lawyer. Suspicious information about the storage company itself. The website used to be different, but the business could have moved. They use a digital relay phone, but those are cheaper. Oh, some of the property is also available for lease. That, that, that would be what you do if you also have storage units. Look, they're a moving and storage company, which means it's just... They're not a moving storage company. The company does not exist. I know you want to ignore that fact, but they don't exist. Some guy with a truck who just has some digital relay number. And based on their spelling, when you texted them, uh, yeah, they're not that technical. They're not that into, like, how to run technology because they're not a technology company. They're a moving company. And moving and storage companies, I hate to break it to you, they sublease. They don't own buildings. They are in the business of moving when they say, our storage facility is here. Here's where it was located. There's a reason that they said, direct quote from the listing, storage unit pod not storage unit storage unit pod and if you look at the measurements yes they put multiple of these in he's gonna tell us he's still gonna try and convince us that he knew they were fake all along but at the same time he still doesn't realize that the whole thing was a setup like i don't holy I do, how do you even argue with this he doesn't even know what he's arguing other than the fact that he's wrong on everything to another unit that they don't own and then charge a margin for it and then make all their money in moving that's how these businesses work but yes they said storage unit pod will be brought out to a loading he still thinks it's real he still removed. thinks there's a real company that's why there. it's not really where it is because they have it somewhere else a bunch of stuff smells real fishy with that but how does that equate to oh well let's set up one big auction we'll get a ton of money and then we'll run off after we you know fooled this company into thinking that we're a real company like the storage facility listing company oh but we're only gonna take cash and it's gonna go for 200k oh but also it's money laundering oh but also it's this also it's that and remember he didn't say any of this in his original video so i said money laundering in one little part of that video and he's brought it up in this video like 25 times because it's like his, his smoking gun is the fact that i said that it i wouldn't be surprised if it was money laundering this, this is all after the fact. He just made a knee-jerk reaction and said, this will be content. Look at me. I'm getting the shut down. Oh, I'm the savior. I'm saving someone 200K. How are you saving someone 200 grand <laughs> if it's money laundering and the bids aren't real? Why are they money laundering through a giant public website with a paper trail a mile long? Why are they money laundering if, as you said, they just opened in March? Usually criminals use this. They didn't ever open. I, I showed you that the website was just created in March. I know you don't get the difference because you're stupid, but established businesses that take cash and have no paper trail well electronic paper trail they have a paper trail because the paper can be faked but you know what i mean it's all the storage company drama like i said i haven't seen all the actual evidence instead of the, the nonsense this idiot is spouting off but that's got to be separate no company would say yeah this this will be our big multi it's not a company desolator for fuck's sakes it's not a fucking company it's a fake company you know thousand hundred thousand dollar thing this will be our big break crime of the century this is like i don't know if you have like a little mouse maze or whatever but the mouse just keeps ramming its face into one corner instead of actually trying to figure out the maze this is what we're watching or listen i guess listening to because it's a static image this is what we're listening to right now a mouse that just keeps smacking its face against the corner do we help the mouse you can't help the mouse you turn him around put him in the right direction put him on the final stretch of the maze and and this is what happens he just finds that corner again and runs straight into it entry then put stolen property in it visible stuff uh, that makes no sense so i mean at, at the end of the day though this guy just doesn't understand how businesses work yeah storage businesses lease to each other they're franchised they're independent hey, i don't i don't know how businesses work guess what guess what uber drivers don't actually work for uber either they're independent people with their own cars i don't know if you knew that they own multiple places they sublease it under other names this happens all the time the only ones that don't are massive franchise ones with a brand out there and i happen to know that the company holding the storage auction really really vets people pretty hard because they have to ensure that they're following the laws. There are very strict laws in all 50 states about storage auctions. Clearly they fucked up on this one because it wasn't a real company. But if you did more than five seconds of research before picking up the phone and then recording yourself for YouTube clout, you would have realized that. And my God, this guy contradicts himself so many times. I can't even edit it all together. Oh, well. You can't edit whatsoever. Um, first of all, we, we saw your attempt at editing at the start of the video where I just called you dumb a bunch of times. Uh, and then you gave up because you got winded. I don't know if it was like too hard to, to move your fingers and mouse around you get you ran out of breath you ran out of time ran out of energy because you're lazy um but <laughs> the hobbit cutouts just in, the, in there too but that, that has nothing to do with it bring oh, it back to the hot bring it back to the hobbit bring it back to the hobbit please storage companies um they're not really where they say they are um spoiler alert they're not in existence they are actually where they said they were but the company doesn't exist they also don't own the building. That's how storage companies work. That's how I know they don't own the building, but they would have some sort of marking or something on the building. And the owner of the building 
would know that they're in the building and that they're running a company out of the building. The owner of the building has multiple companies in the building uh, and that's not a that's not a moving and storage company. Independent, you know, different name storage companies work, and they're tossed around between multiple owners all the time, and subleased and subsold under different names. Is it just my one guy? Might have a heart attack if I tell him that the same company owns KFC and Pizza Hut. Oh my God, he's he's gonna be in an asylum if somebody lets him know that the Mr. Beast restaurants aren't real; they're really just ghost kitchens operating out of other places that don't match their business listing. Please leave the investigating to people who know what they're talking about. So to reiterate. I never said that these are real. In fact, about a minute and a half in, and he just totally glazed over this and kept making the video like I never said it, said that these are probably counterfeit. You see Power 9, you see an auction, you see anything that looks expensive in the magic world. Sealed product, probably a reseal. Power 9, probably fake. Anything old, probably fake. Anything valuable, probably fake. And that's sold on a website where you can't go inspect it in person. And I told the owner of the cutout that they were almost definitely counterfeit. I have the logs to prove it. I told my dad. You didn't. I talked to him, and when I talked to him, he said that, that you told him they were worth a bajillion million dollars, or however much you told him. Probably the same number that you gave on your, your misleading number that you gave on your your title and thumbnail of your, your original video. You blew smoke up his ass telling him it was worth a bunch of money. I talked to the same guy. I didn't have to, also like you, I didn't have to, to message him on Facebook to get his phone number because I can do research and, and find that on my own. Discord server that they're probably counterfeit because duh, it was so implied that when you see anything like this, it's fake, I've debunked them in the past. And to not completely undercut the like, yeah, I get it, they're probably fake, let's move on in the first video. That any magic player with functioning brain already assumed, but I did mention it in the first two minutes just to mention it in case, you know, we're not- I got bad news for you. Any magic collector that's watching you without trying to get a good laugh is probably not very knowledgeable all on the same page here, I guess that just slipped past you, that because some stolen properties involved, and, and my initial report that I heard from other people looking into this was that the owner of the bookstore also had like a, a family friend or something or a, 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 a family member that... No, you either made that up or you got it from a bad source because directly from him, that did not happen. I think, I'm pretty sure you also said at one point, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, but uh, that you heard that directly from the owner of the bookstore. So either you're making that up or someone gave you bad information and you maybe did a little fib and said that you got that information from him maybe accidental fib sold stuff at a magic convention and maybe they just got burned on the pokemon cards because as you stated you have no direct evidence other than um color and uh, i don't know that the magic cards are fake there was a tiny chance that they were real because if some of it was stolen from a shop a retail There's book no shop chance they were real. then some of the rest of it might have been stolen from a magic the gathering shop i guess you don't watch the news because you don't know how often these stores are broken into, and the big expensive cards up front I, are stolen. I cover those I as well. I also didn't know because I did mention this in it would, my video. It would take you all of two seconds to just type in stolen uh, on my channel, and you would you would see that I cover all of that stuff. But this is the this is the big boy investigator, Desolator Magic, the guy that still doesn't want to believe that the company doesn't exist. Even in my shop, we put fake counterfeit stuff, empty boxes full of sandbags, and other assorted stuff not of value in both of the front glass cases. There was nothing of value in either of those cases because they were decoys for people breaking in and stealing from it. So the, the stolen uh, exhibitor pass, the stolen various deck boxes, the stolen 1995... Why, is, why are these stolen? Why do you have to assume everything is stolen? Just because there's one item that someone is saying was stolen from them years ago doesn't mean that everything in there is stolen. Why, why does it have to be stolen and not staged? Just because you could, you heard from one person that that was their item, it has their name on it. It was stolen from them years ago. Might not even probably wasn't stolen from the same by the same person. But and now everything in there is stolen, and that's where he kind of led this chase onto the. Oh, guys, I'm not going to show you the rest of this because I don't want anyone to steal these stolen cards, these stolen real magic cards just that are worth a ton of money. You can't just go get those. Nobody just has those sitting around. There's fucking five of them on eBay. Jesus fuck, man. Like. Just, like, if you're going to claim that you do any research, just type in the name of the box on eBay and you can see there's like five or six of them right there. I could buy, I could get a whole stack, I could make a throne out of them. It's not rare. And it doesn't have the stickers on it. The probably stolen, because they wouldn't have the money, you know, multi-hundred to a thousand dollar black cases. Then we had what- Oh my god. They're 80 bucks. Looked like, you know, price tagged off the shelf because then it looked too close because I don't know modern Pokemon stuff. Those could have been stolen from a shop. It looked like all of this was stolen from all different places and people steal. Those are open ETBs that probably just have bulk in them, if anything. 
eggs, people steal all kinds of stuff from conventions. Well, what do you get if you steal a bunch of expensive looking cards from vendors and from people and from stores? You get mostly counterfeits because that's what they are. It's You know what? I hate to shatter your whole reality here, but I think you need a wake up call because you clearly don't know how the world works. If you go to an art museum, there's a pretty good chance that that painting on the wall isn't the real one. The real one's in storage. You know why? Because somebody can walk off with it. Because people have done that. You idiot. And occasionally dumb liberals like to throw tomato sauce and potatoes on them. And flash photography damages them over time. So this whiny, sarcastic little troll of a man just got exactly what he, he hoped wouldn't happen, I'm sure. Everybody calling him out on his crap. And by No one's calling me. Uh, my, uh, unlike you, I don't. my comment section is free. If you want to crap on me, I don't care. No one's crapping on me because I provided actual evidence to what happened here. You did not. You just argued with yourself for... In this video, 32 minutes. By the minutes. way, you might want to watch what you say about other people. I cut out some of the stuff that would get my channel struck. He said way more offensive things about me, way more crossing the line things that, uh, let's just say he's really playing with fire with, with getting a channel strike there, but it ain't gonna be cut. I'm telling ya, go ahead, try me with a strike. Make sure you have a lawyer, because you need one. Compliments of me, when people make an ass out of themselves and come at me and look this stupid, I want evidence. I, I want that up for the world to see. What's it saying? Never interrupt your oh, And in my video, I had your comments in full context. I don't know if you realize that or not. Again, I, 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 it's, it's too dumb to even realize that I'm arguing with his own comments. Unlike his, like, where he cropped out, like, three or four times where I called him dumb. I actually wanted to try to have an argument with your points that were extremely invalid and this video is even worse you were scattered all over the place like this doesn't even make any sense none of it makes any sense because there's already evidence of the company being fake from my previous video and it just continues on we just uh, this is totally debunked at this point and uh, and me when they're making a complete ass out of themselves i don't think that's quite what the quote is but you know what it's relevant so somebody sent me this i clicked on it once and i said well those are counterfeit why? Because they're Power 9. And then we moved on to, oh, well, there's something stolen in it. Oh, but then, what about this? Oh, but then that's older, too, and that's from 95. So if these are from 95, and then if somebody died and somebody didn't know what they had, which is usually why, you know, storage auction goes up, okay. So, again, you're going to reiterate the point that you fell for all the decoy items. The little box in the front. The, the press pass, which wasn't from 95, but the uh, all the stuff put out front. You're just showing us that you fell for all of the very obvious bait items within this. And then somehow ran with the fact that you got thousand dollar cases that are actually only eighty dollars, and with the box out front, that's a pretty penny. You couldn't even be bothered to look up the price of one. Okay, maybe it's a one percent chance that they're real. Then I got more evidence, more evidence, more. And what about the? Not what you said. You didn't know the Pokemon was fake. You didn't know anything was fake from the beginning. You wanted to argue the fact that like you wanted to keep this under wraps and find out who they belong to. What about that? What about, you know, well, if it's a thief and if this is, you know, inventory and if those are deck boxes that were stolen and then that doesn't match that and this just looks like all one giant lot of stuff that people stole over the years. So now we move on to, okay, if they really knew what they were doing, they would only steal real Power 9 cards, but most people are too stupid to know what real ones look like. So they robbed a couple people at, at conventions, they robbed a couple shops, and this is the result right here. Oh, and nowhere did I ever tell people to bid on it. By the time I made my video, it was already removed. I guess you meant- I, I didn't I didn't say that you told people to bid on it. I said the desolator dummies, implying that people that are as dumb as you might have bid on this. It's that. It was shut down about six hours before I made my video. So no, I didn't tell anybody the real, I didn't tell anybody to bid on it. That is just absolute bullshit that you made up to make yourself look better and me look stupider. Well, I've got the bigger audience and now they know your name. Rattle Pokemon, have fun with that. You're you don't have a bigger audience. You, you have a higher sub count because you've been making videos for seven years. It's meaningless. It, if we want to get into the audience part of it, uh, I, as I mentioned earlier, I'm sorry, but I get, I get more views than you do. And my channel's growing and yours is hemorrhaging, hemorrhaging subscribers. When, it, when you get like minus 300 in a month recently, that's, that's pretty hard to do. You have to, be, you have to be pretty dumb. You have to make some pretty miserable content in order to, to get that result. We're very lucky that my community is wholly pretty civil and they're like adults and they're not jackasses who just watch cringe trash where you say, oh, look at this counterfeit, look at this idiot, oh, look, look at this. That's your whole channel. It's sad. And that's why you suck. Oh, he's going he's gonna to mock me now. Okay, so his his high IQ uh, viewer base is not going to insult me. And it's not the fact that he's just painfully wrong on all of this. Oh, this and you're like, oh, I'm going to make a video and I'm going to be part of it. Oh, I'm going to get so many views. I'm going to get so famous over this. And look where it led you. Contradicting yourself, throwing out hollow insults, and me just absolutely breaking down everything you said. And now everybody knows what a fraud you are. Well, congratulations. 
Have fun with your YouTube career when I'm sure this isn't the first massive screw up you've made and it won't be the last. But seriously, drop it. You do not know who you're messing with. I've been nice. Okay, so <laughs> this is always the funniest. He's like, oh, you don't know who I'm messing with. I'm the fucking toughest around. I've been here for seven years and I got my 50k subscribers. Fuck off, rattle Pokemon. Um, <laughs> He's so far. You want to keep pushing it, you're going to see what happens when I'm not nice. So to go to town be not nice i don't know if i can handle anything that's more confusing than whatever the fuck you just said in 32 minutes but by all means go for it um go be an idiot as far away from my channel as you can possibly get and i'll see everybody else next time all right so <laughs> oh guys i hope that was entertaining i don't know what do you see when you well, see we got ads we got ads uh, I don't. I hope that was as entertaining as a, for you guys as it was for me. Uh, I don't even know. I think the next one is just gonna make so little sense that I, I don't know if we can even watch it without uh, getting a headache. But uh, but yeah, that's uh, Desolator for you. Um, it, I don't know what kind of little bubble that he's within that he thinks that his audience is larger. That he that he thinks that it's that me sending him mean messages about how he's wrong. But uh, but yeah, that's. Uh, that's it. All right, so that's, uh, if you're watching this live uh, during the premiere, stay tight. Stay, st <laughs> stick around. We're gonna uh, gonna automatically uh, redirect you over to the the podcast. Enjoy that. You guys have a good night. Take care of each other out there, and uh, let's keep slamming some criminals and uh, LOLing at uh, the desolators of the world. <laughs>